Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. This is your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. Today, I welcome in one of my first out-of-state entrepreneurs who is actually a coach to entrepreneurs, which got me thinking about coaching. Why is it important, and why should an entrepreneur care? I believe I have mentioned before in this show, I have a mentor, but I do not currently have a business development coach. First, let me explain a little bit of the difference, and then we'll get into coaching. Think of a mentorship as a relationship-oriented rapport with an individual focused more on professional development of the mentee. Coaching is more task-oriented, focused more on goals and developing specific skills to achieve those goals. For example, in this episode, we discuss creating a business plan. These do not need to be done individually behind closed doors in a locked room where nobody knows about the idea. Quite the opposite, in fact. Having a coach who has written a business plan, financial plan, a former entrepreneur of said profession is very beneficial. Honestly, when I first started this podcast, I reached out to one of my first guests who runs a very successful podcast, Shane Brennan of Asheville. If you have not listened to the episode, please do so. It's great and asked how him and his partner started their podcast, what equipment they used, microphones, etc. As I say in this podcast often, I wanted help spotting my blind sides and my weaknesses. I wanted to learn how to avoid pitfalls and potholes to be successful in my business ventures, whichever ones I decide to pursue. That's what a good coach can help with. According to the Entrepreneur Magazine, A coach assists you with guidance to narrow down the target spots that you might miss. Identifying your weak and blind spots prevents you from future threats and prepares you to first understand yourself better to benefit your business. Again, starting this podcast, I knew nothing of making a podcast, but I knew about my community, I knew about business, and I know how to talk. A lot. Maybe too much for some of you. And for those of you, I am sorry, but I still love you. Okay, back to the topic. Coaching is also valuable to an entrepreneur because of the amount of business knowledge being shared. In fact, I hope this podcast acts as a form of a digital business coach, learning new business acumen in an episode or two. I know I have learned a great deal from my former guests myself. In fact, many guests, in particular in angel investors like John Loomis of Baseballism and Darius Monsef of Brave Care, again, two great episodes if you have not, please go listen, discuss the need for entrepreneurs to share their ideas with others. I know, the thought of it sounds weird, like you're selling the farm by giving away your idea, but it is important to know quickly if your business idea is going to be successful and a coach can offer an unbiased third party view. According to Amy Raham from Iron Monk Solution, if you ask your coworkers, colleagues, friends, and family members what you need to do better, they may be biased in their opinions and they may not understand the strengths and the weaknesses of your organization, where your company fits in with the industry, your management and leadership styles, or the way you run your business. However, if you hire a coach, However, if you hire a business coach, they will understand what your wants, needs, and desires are. They will understand why you react the way you do in certain situations. And if they have the industry-specific experience, they will be able to offer you insights that other people in your circle may not be able to. Lastly, a good coach will be able to keep you on the right track. From meeting your goals to carving out a path to success to identifying new business habits and needs and ideas, a business coach can be beneficial. However, there will be a cost for a business or life coach that can range from $75 to $200 an hour, but some coaches may offer package deals. I would encourage those who are interested in hiring a coach to explore multiple options and find the coach that you trust, that is knowledgeable in your area of business and then wants to see your business succeed and not their business succeed. A coach's success is directly linked to a client's success, as my next guest will tell you. For the aspiring coaches out there, here is some unsolicited advice. Do not assume clients will come to you. Marketing and network to your niche of expertise is key to being a successful coach. 
If you are sitting around waiting for clients to come to you, you may be sitting around a while. As the old saying goes, you won't sell it if you don't market it. And remember, as a coach, you truly have an opportunity to change an individual's life in a meaningful way. It is very important to meet the needs of the clients just like any business. Ask specific questions. Make time to observe the works of the business and the entrepreneur. Define areas of development and circle back to those if the coaching gets off track. Never lead an individual down an inappropriate progression by trying to fix everything or just telling the entrepreneur what to do. Copying was never helpful when I was in school and it won't be helpful in business either. Instead, focus on ingrained processes. Humans learn by doing, meaning we need to be able to make mistakes and decide what to do differently next time. In the end, coaching has strong benefits from professional life to economic growth. The right coach can help steer the ship to prevent it from capsizing. But don't take my word for it. Get out there and network. Maybe you find that you may benefit from a coach or maybe someone may benefit from your coaching. Thank you and I hope you enjoy this episode. Shades of Entrepreneurship, where we interview entrepreneurs to inspire the future entrepreneur. I'll be your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. So grab a drink, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. grow to the next level. Please welcome Colin Gould. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. This is your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. Today, I am here with the owner of Seven Stage Advisor, Carl Gould. How are you doing, my good man? Hey, Gabe. I'm great. How are you doing? I'm well. Great. Thank you so much uh, for being on the show today, first and foremost. Uh, but I would love to get into what Seven Stage Advisors is. But first, let's introduce the world to Carl. Who is Carl? Well, um, you know, I'm just an uh, everyday guy. I, I live in New Jersey. Um, I have uh, married. I have three children. And I come from a big family. I'm one of 10 kids. And um, I, you know, went through traditional uh, grade school and high school. I went to the University of Delaware for accounting and finance for a couple of years and uh, started one of many businesses when I was a teenager. I had a landscaping company, then after that, a cons- uh, construction company. But when I first got started in business, I also learned the science of coaching way, way back in 1990. Fell in love with it, really enjoyed it. And then, um, you know, I've been on that path ever since. I was a uh, a coach, I had a coaching practice through the nineties. And then in 2002 started the business that I have today. So you, you started the business in a seven state advisor. W- what exactly is the business? So we are, we are a hybrid. We're a business coaching and consulting firm. And um, what we do is the consulting side is we help people understand their differentiators, create their strategic plan, understand um, their pricing model and their organizational chart and who's the right people to put in the right seats and all that sort of thing. And then we coach them and help them drive the plan and hold them accountable to the plan over, over time. Nice. So, so how was this concept kind of created? How did you create this concept? Well, I started, um, uh, like I said, it was just a, a solo um, solo practice. So it was very grassroots. Um, I, I just started out by working on my own, built up my cash reserves, and then I started to uh, certify other people as coaches. And then what I did was, once I uh, started to build up a team of coaches, I then went out to uh, clients as a team, as, a per, as opposed to an individual, and over time, we were very self-funded, and, and since then, I've, I've gotten some traditional funding in order to scale, but for the most part, it was a very self-funded venture. 
So let's let's talk about that a little bit. Let's talk about the funding first. You you mentioned you went out and got funding. Let's let's for the listeners at home that might not be familiar with the venture capital process, including myself. Can you give us your experience in that area? Sure. Well, there, venture capital would be a very fancy schmancy term for what I did. <laughs> um, uh, venture. Uh, so I had, you know, there's a lot of different ways to get funded, a lot of different nicknames for the funding. And I would, I would say probably the funding that I got um, early on in my career and later on was more angel investing, meaning uh, it was friends and family. It was early stage. And, and I think they were more, they were more believing in me than the concept. They were betting on me, you know? And so I had to prove my concept. I had to have a business plan. I had to show them what the business model was, why I'm doing this, what would the, could the potential returns be? And in my uh, contracting business, I would do some large projects. And so I might buy a piece of land and subdivide that and then, um, uh, and then build homes on it. So I might have partnerships in different projects. So I had projects that got funded and then I had the overall business that got funded. So it was a, it, it was a very much a hybrid um, situation. Got, and, you know, one of the things you actually just mentioned was the need to make a business plan. And, you know, I think a lot of entrepreneurs, when they start business, they don't really think about that piece. They think about, you know, I just need to create an idea. When you created your business plan, was this something you did by yourself or was this something that you actually, you know, collaborated with somebody doing? I collab. Uh, so I did it by myself. So, well, and I was starting a coaching company too around that time. Remember, so as a coach, you, you are drowning in planning. I mean, there's yeah. no shortage of, of people to help you plan tools to plan ideas around planning. I mean, I lived in that world. And so it was really, really eye opening because I, you know, in the beginning, I thought planning was setting goals. You got some goals. How much do I want to make? How much do I want to charge? Who are my clients going to be? That sort of thing. Uh, when I hired a business coach, because in the very beginning, I was, a, I was a, a life coach and an executive coach. And although I also ran businesses, I didn't connect the dots that well as far as overall strategic and business planning. But it wasn't until I hired a business coach for myself and, and my business a few years later that I really understood the, understand the art and science of planning and really how much of a catalyst it was. Man, it gave, once I had a plan and I understood and I got all those ideas out of my head and onto paper, it was like, it was like a, um, a horse race where all the gates just opened up simultaneously. It wasn't just one gate with one guy on a horse. All the gates went and all, and all the courses ran. And that's kind of how I felt like in my business because everything I wanted to do, my marketing plan, I found people that wanted to be involved be it an agency or someone who's willing to invest in that side of my business or the sales, all of a sudden that opened up the finance that opened up operations that opened up. So it was like releasing the hounds once I started planning and I found it very, very liberating uh, for my, my own businesses. And it became something I really um, enjoy even today in my advisory. You mentioned you were a kind of a life coach previously. Is this your first business? No, well, I, you mean the construction? Well, my, my landscaping company was my very first business. Okay. Um, while I had my landscaping company, I started coaching. So I guess that was my second business. I sold my landscaping company, and then I started a uh, a construction and real estate development company. Okay. That was my third business. And I sold that business um, later on. So I exited from two contracting slash construction, construction companies. I still have the coaching business. As it, as it sits today. Yeah. So, so with construction, right, your, your previous experience in construction, right, you're mentioning, and now you're doing coaching. How did those, how did you kind of transition from construction to coaching? Well, I was already in coaching when I got to construction and, and I, you know, coaching was my side hustle all through the 1990s. Gotcha. Uh, so I, it was my side hustle for 12 years, but there came a day, um, it, there came a day, um, where I said to um, uh, I said to myself, I said to my family, and I said I want to become a full time coach, and um, you know I want to get I want to get out of the construction business, and they thought I was crazy, you know, because at the time 
got to remember at the time, coaching the way we know it today didn't really exist. Mm. The job didn't exist. What you did didn't exist. So um, I, when I said I wanted to do that, most people said, what sport? Like, what sport? You want to go into what? Coaching? Um, so uh, what is it? Like, it was... And then when I explained it, some people actually laughed. They're like, what? You're, what? You like you get paid for that? So, it, you know, it really wasn't a mainstream or well-known uh, uh, occupation at the time. Not at all. Um, and so I told people that I wanted to do it. You know, they didn't know I'd been coaching part-time and, you know, as, on my own. But I, I said I was serious. I said I'm going to do it, and they were like, "All right," but they all thought I was crazy. <laughs> um, and um, uh, but I, I so there is a period for two years where I launched the full-on coaching business with coaches, the whole bit, and I treated it like it was a full-time venture. But I still had my full-time coat, my consult, my construction business, and so. Um, and so I ran two businesses side by side for two years straight. I wouldn't say I would recommend it, but since this was such a new venture, I w and, and there just wasn't a lot of market acceptance at the time, I wanted to make sure that I had the, the new business up to a certain period before I sold the old one. Mm, gotcha. So that was my path. Like I said, I wouldn't recommend it, yeah. but that's what I did. You know, you, know? you know, a few things you've mentioned thus far is you, you've, one, you obviously work as a professional coach. However, you also mentioned you yourself hired a professional coach. Let's let's talk a little bit why that is important for entrepreneurs to think about um, if or is it important for them to hire a professional coach? I'm sorry, can you ask that again, please? Yeah. So you mentioned, um, you know, previously that you have hired a professional coach, yet you are also a professional coach, correct? Why is correct. it? Why was it important in your perception? Why is it important for entrepreneurs to engage or hire a professional coach? Why should they? Well, you know, the, part of the challenge with um, part of the challenge with a business owner, or really anybody for that matter, whether this is personal or professional, is that we're all running our lives um, every day, and we can only see the world through our eyes. We don't have an extra set of eyes. We don't have an extra perspective, and we're all in our own fishbowl. We're all in our own jar, and you can't read the jar. You can't read the label when you're inside the jar. And so I'm, as a coach, I'm outside the jar. You know, I can see your blind spots. That's just, I can see what you're going through. I mean, imagine when you're driving your car down the road, right? And you, and you want to make a turn or you you're, you're want to move into the next lane. You look across, you know, from the driver's side to the passenger side, and there's a blind spot. It's not that you're a bad driver. It's just there's something blocking your view, and you simply can't see that. Right. And, and so a coach or somebody in, in the passenger seat can look over, see very clearly and say, hey, it's good to pass. You're safe or it's not good to pass. Don't don't. It's not safe. Don't go. And they just have a perspective you don't have. They're no better at driving than you are. They just have a different perspective. And so if if as a coach, I can provide an outside perspective, if I can give you thoughts and ask you questions that you're not asking yourself and I can help you come to conclusions you would not have gotten into on your own. I can accelerate and catalyze your results significantly. I can, I can be like a time machine for you because I can condense everything that I've learned, everything I'm observing you do, and everything I've seen my other clients uh, be successful or not at, and I can translate that to you, and um, I can translate that to you, and um, uh, you would, you would uh, be the beneficiary of not having to go through all that time and all those experiences. So let's let's dive in a little bit more into seven stage advisors. Like let's for for the individuals at home because it's a it's a seven part series. Can you explain a little bit what it is and, and what individuals can kind of expect to get out of that seven part series? Sure. So um, back when I was getting started as a coach, um, there just weren't a lot of systems and a lot of. Um, you know, structure and protocols that I, you know, that I had available to me to get started. And so I just started to document everything that I was doing with my clients and, you know, cause I wanted this to be a full-time business. And so I had to come up with a coaching model that would help me um, navigate, you know, the world of, of 
clients and and uh, sessions and and the practice management. And so I I started to notice that there are seven very distinct stages that. Um, uh, people that are looking to grow their business or their life went through. And um, the, the more I looked at them, the more I said, you know, it comes back to these seven. And so uh, the seven stages of business success go in this sequence. And number one is strategic planning, where you get all those great ideas out of your head and onto paper. Stage two is when you become a specialist or you build your authority. Number three um, uh, is the synergy stage where you start to build a team um, that'll help you execute on your plan because you're so busy because you've built this expert this expert authority. And then four, stage four is the system stage where you start to build your, your ecosystem or what type of business are you going to be when you grow up. And then stage five is the sustainability stage where a franchise system or a, you know, a, a duplicatable, scalable model is built and you can really uh, take the shackles off your business and and it could get as big as you want it to be stage six is saleability and what that means is that you have built an uh, organization that you could sell at a premium right stage seven and it's an asset stage seven is the succession stage where you um you can fire employee number one that's you and uh you uh, employee number one and um, and the business is firing on all cylinders and will grow uh, and, and in the hands of the next generation. Great products, great services, firing on all cylinders, and the next generation has taken over and can run with your vision, mission, vision, and values. And so those are the seven stages. Um, they take 36 months to go through, and they uh, we find that you have to go through them in sequence. You can't buy your way past certain stages. You have to earn your way through. And if you do, you will be, you will be very generously rewarded. Nice. So for, you know, entrepreneurs at home, like myself, you know, what could we do right now to be a better business person tomorrow? What can you do right now? So there's a number of, there's a number of things that uh, the first step that I say when, when somebody is either, May, you know, trying to figure out what their proof of concept is, or they want to refine it or revisit it because of maybe, you know, maybe some of the things that are going on in the world these days is reconnect with what your clients want and look at your pricing strategy and your overall delivery strategy. And the one way that you do that is I suggest that you take the top five complaints about companies like you, you know, in your industry, maybe not about you personally, but like you. And you say to yourself, what are the top five things that are on the minds of prospects and consumers? What do they write about? What are their reviews? What do the blogs say? What are some of the object objections you've gotten in your sales process? And also, what are some of the things they say to when clients say to you when they hire you because they think you do it better than your competitors? Take those top five complaints and take those top five complaints and um, uh Put, roll them into your business model and share with people um, how you and promise uh, prospects that if these things ever, first of all, these things will never happen to you if you become my client. But if they ever did happen to you, I'd give you all your money back. Gotcha. That would be one of the first things that I would suggest. Okay. You know, and, and kind of sticking with that, you know, you, you go through, you've probably seen a lot and you've dealt with a lot of, you know, small business owners and entrepreneurs. What advice would you give a young entrepreneur starting a business? Like what is one nugget that you can say, Hey, watch out for this pothole or avoid this landmine or certainly do not do this. What's like that one nugget you would give to them? Well, the, the, the one nugget I learned very early in my career when I had no business experience was hustle wins the day. You don't even have to be the best thing, the smartest tool in the shed. Yeah, you got to get there sometime. But if you are relentless in your hustle and in your work ethic, you will win. Because nine out of ten people will will stop when it gets really hard, when it gets uncomfortable. And they won't see it all the way through. But if you are willing to see it all the way through, if you're the one that's willing to um, you know, stick with your plan and keep pivoting as many times as you need to pivot, you will win out. 
you know, and, um, and, and when you, when you see businesses that are really successful, trace them back to the early days in the early story. And it is almost always the story of that entrepreneur who, um, you know, just wouldn't say, take no for an answer. Mm -hmm. I mean, Sarah Blakely, who started Spanx, she, when she first started, she came up with this idea for Spanx. She didn't have a sales team. So she's, so she got, you know, other boutiques to show her product. And then she would go herself from boutique to boutique and teach the salespeople how to sell her product. Since she didn't have a sales team, she hustled around and used the sales forces of other places. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of entrepreneurial spirit and dedication you have to have. And if you have it, you're going to win. And if you don't, it's going to be a really hard yeah. you know, and it's life kind of, as an entrepreneur. Yeah. You know, it's funny. We, we actually mention this often. I, I speak with a lot of entrepreneurs on this show. And one of the things we discuss is fake it till you make it, you know, just get out there, keep working at it, hustle like you mentioned, right? You got to hustle at it, but don't give up. Because it's the individuals that, like you mentioned, nine out of ten, those nine folks who are going to kind of bow out when it gets tough. Make sure you're your number ten, right? Now, looking back, Carl, on everything, what advice would you give a younger Carl? I would have, I would have had a little bit more faith in myself, and I would have told myself to believe in myself a bit more. Mm, yeah. Um, because the um, what I I was on to, I was on. I was on to something early on and I just assumed that I was young and, you know, fresh into business that everyone else thought the same way that everyone else must've think these same things. And I just finally came around to it, but I actually did have a lot of original ideas and I did have the, I did have a lot to offer. And by doing that, um, had I done that, I think I would have grown bigger faster and I would have had more people buy into my, uh, buy into my vision. And I probably would have looked for investment partners earlier because they could have accelerated my growth. And I realized now looking back then they really did believe in me and probably had, and I just didn't ask, but had I said, listen, I want someone to put in a certain amount of money so I can scale this business. They probably would have said yes. And I just didn't, I just didn't do it. You know? Yeah. It's almost like you have to believe in yourself before they believe in you kind of thing. A little bit more. I, I just, I assume I, I, you know, was my own worst en enemy in a way in that I just thought, I figured because I was young and I was new that, you know, I had to earn my stripes and take longer. And, you know, whereas, you know, as I look back now, I was like, man, all the signs were there that I could have just gone right for it. Yeah, that's yeah. Very, very true. So for the folks at home that want to learn more about seven state advisory, maybe they want to contact you and get a hold of you. How can they do that? Webpage, social media sites, how can they get a hold of you? Best way to find me personally is go to my personal site, carl360.com, C A R L 360.com. And, um, you're, um, uh, or, or go to my regular website, carlgould.com. And that's the gateway of all the things that I do. Perfect. Carl, thank you so much again for jumping on the show today. A really good thank you for tuning in to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. For more information, please follow the Shades of E on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, or visit theshadesofe.com.